Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to some career mode goodness. We're back here and I can't wait to give you this episode because there is an awesome thing that happens. And uh, yeah, look at those injuries. You guys thought my injuries was bad. Take a look at that guy. Three or is that four injuries I think it was. Which meant four of his players couldn't play. And I don't know whether they were starting first team players for him. But I know it's happened to me plenty of times. So it's about time EA gave them a bit of the sausage as well. Because uh, I was certainly fed up with that. But uh, a really nice shot by Babel there onto the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper fists it back out into... To Fisher's path and Fisher buries that for a goal which is nice to see good for Fisher to pick up a goal for himself as well and uh, nice to go 1-0 up and it's quite important we win these sort of games because it is um, def you know especially when they had what like four injured players you know you got to capitalize on that and definitely punish the other team um, so you know looking for a win out of this all day every day um, the defender does actually really well to snatch the ball off there stopping the counter attack and uh, then the boys as you can see is one against four there and uh, uh, Ericsson just does a fantastic job of creating space and firing that in. That is just the magical. Sorry, I got so excited there I hit my mic. That is just that's just what's so magical about Ericsson. You know, that was a really nicely worked goal. And the P roller from Ibarbo there just trickles past the keeper, and he must be really pissed off with himself because that is no doubt an easy goal to save. But uh, sometimes the P rollers just tend to go in. I'm not entirely sure why. It's just the way the cookie tends to crumble sometimes. And uh, as you can see. You know, we were three 0 up cruising, but we weren't done there. You know, uh, we haven't we haven't battered a team in a little while, and I just felt as though today was going to be that day. And as you can see, Eric's in there with another well-deserved goal. He is playing very well at the moment. I believe he's coming up to an 83 rating. When we first started at the beginning of the season, he was um, 80 rated. So to go up three, you know, halfway through a season, that is just really, really good. Um, Anderson there gets on the ball and fires that one in. Anderson playing ahead. I think it's. Uh, Playing ahead of Lukoki, I think it is, um, who's actually on the bench. I'm not entirely sure. I think that's uh, the uh, substitution I made. But Ibarbo there with his cheeky yellow boots makes a beautiful pass through to Babel. And Babel's electrifying pace just crushes that defender and this is just becoming a little bit silly now I mean I didn't want to you know hurt the team's feelings that bad I mean they already had a few injured players but it looks like now they're going to be emotionally scarred after this because uh, you know it was just getting pretty intense and uh, we you know I, I thought we were done there but the boys just had more goals in them and uh, they wanted to score more as shown there uh, Roshun uh, manages to make it 7-0 and that was probably one of my biggest wins on career mode so if you could put your hands together for that that was just you know a good performance from the lads Eric's in there for me man of the match Babel played well Ibarba played well you know to win 7-0 your entire team has to play well and a 9.9 .9 rating for Ericsson and I believe it was a 9.6 and 9.7 for my two strikers as well so all round a solid performance and needless to say I'm very happy with that um, but, you know, we could have stopped them, but we did have another game coming up pretty soon. And uh, Marone, a player that I brought in right at the beginning of the summer transfer window. Um, I haven't actually spoken about him too much, given you guys too much of my thoughts on him um, and how he's developing. But he is doing well. I remember I picked him up. He was 73 or something like that when I picked him up. You know, relatively low rated. He's already become a 77 now, so he's definitely making his way up the um, career mode food chain. As Ibarbo decides to slide right into the key. Deeper, and so he could sniff his sack. I mean, that is just what happens when you go 1-0 up. And uh, we weren't stopping there again. You know, the team was just playing so very well. Um, Ericsson especially. I mean, Ericsson is really a special player. Um, if you guys can pick him up at any point, just do it, guys. You guys will not regret it. I mean, he managed to make the run down that left-hand side and just sends in a beautiful ball onto Babel's head. And Babel will not mess those sort of opportunities up for me. And uh, I really feel as though making that swap, you know how I used to play Sigerson. Um, or I even played De Jong as striker up next to um, Ibarbo and that really just wasn't working for me and it's I'm actually really glad that I found a way to um, maximize the use of Babel also being able to use the youngsters that I have on the wing you know Anderson, Lukoki, uh, Lukoki, Fisher you know all those players I do have available to me and they fit well on the wing um, so it's nice I can get Babel in and, in and involved and most importantly it actually works out for the best because Babel is actually a bit of an animal of a striker 
Oscar. So I'm slightly poor defending there, um, just in the uh, right back sort of position, and uh, my center back there just gets completely done. I guessed the wrong way. He went the other way, and I paid for that as they managed to get a goal back. I'm a little bit disappointed with that, but it was 2-2, and uh, we were still feeling pretty good about things. As you can see, Babel there with some good dribbling, and uh, Ericsson takes another shot. Unfortunately, unlike last time, this one doesn't go in. Um, a little bit, uh, you know, gutted that it didn't go in because he has been playing so very well. It would have been nice to see him score another bit, another screamer, but Babel there onto the ball, plays it through to Ericsson, and Ericsson is just on another level. He is next level. Ladies and gents, I mean, really, this guy is just so good. And I know if I do decide to go to another team eventually, I might just have to bring him over with me because he is doing such a great job here at Ajax. Um, he will be pretty pricey. I'd imagine, you know, you'd be looking around 20 million for him. But for some reason, I just get the feeling he'd be absolutely worth it. You guys can already see um, the sort of things he's doing for Ajax at this level when he's only, what, like 83 rated. But Ibarbo there manages to pick up on the loose ball. And that is, um, you know, a good sign of a striker at the right place at the right time. And that's exactly what happened here and yeah I mean one thing that I'd like to say a little bit about Ericsson since we're doing a bit of circle jerking about Ericsson is the fact that he almost feels as though a bit better version of Goethe for me you know a uh, member back at QPR had Goethe even when he was 90 rated he was playing like how Ericsson is playing now so uh, I really look forward to seeing um, how he Ericsson develops and you know if I for whatever reason do go to a different uh, team then uh, I think he's definitely a player I'm, I might have to save up for because he looks pretty lethal and uh yeah, so a good run down there by Abarbo. Plays it through to Sana. I actually decided to play Sana. I've heard a lot of great things about him, especially from you guys in the comments. You know, you told me uh, to play Sana, and I was like, you know what? Uh, um, a few of the wingers were low on fitness. Why not give him a go? And he played well. You know, he definitely um, bombed down those wings. As you can see here, he's now on the ball. He was actually very impressive. I mean, my winging options, my winger options, sorry, are, is just incredible. He gets a goal there for himself. Very well deserved as well. He had played magnificently throughout this game. And uh, we went 2-0 up, and it stayed 2-0, which was great. Um, as it finished there, uh, Sana scored the winner in the 67th minute, which was all gravy, baby. But now, we have the moment, guys. The moment. The bit I was all talking to you about. The bit at the beginning of the episode where I said... You know, we've run into something. We've hit a bit of a block. So, we have the transfer window coming up here. And there's something that hit me in the face. First off, Romania offers me a contract. I was a little bit skeptical. But it's what happened next. Manager role at Napoli. I've been offered a job at Napoli. Now, I understand a lot of people were like, Cal... I, I like Ajax, but I, you know, I'd prefer if you were a different team. I don't like the league situation you're in now. And, you know, Napoli are a good squad, but I have to admit, guys, the Serie A is not necessarily a league I'm that interested in. If you guys watch MG8 series, he didn't enjoy Napoli. So what's to say I would enjoy it? You know, I've been looking at other teams, you know, maybe if I, if I you know, the, the club found out that I was interested in moving, they might end up just getting rid of me, because I am looking at other clubs, I'm looking at the likes of Wolfsburg, you know, Schalke, you know, a lot of different teams out there, you know, do I stay with Ajax, do I take this Napoli job? Or, uh, you know, because even if I don't take this Napoli, uh, Napoli job, the board might find out, you know, I'm interested in looking elsewhere. And who knows, you know, they might just give me a bit of the sausage and tell me to just leave. They don't want a manager who's not fully committed to playing for, um, to playing for Ajax. And we all know, you know, Freezy's fans are throwing up a bit of a fit. It, you know, what might happen? You guys let me know on my Facebook page. What do you want to see? You know, um, I, you know, the Premier League, I've been there, done that. It's definitely not going back to the Premier League. So that's ruled out. Um, you know, the Bundesliga is really appealing for me. I'm not too sure. You know, could this be the end of my Ajax time? I don't know. It's down to you guys. It's what you guys want. Okay. So do let me know in the comments of this video and on my Facebook page. I'll be taking a look very closely at my Facebook page, so if you really want to let me know, go ahead and check out there, because uh, shit just got real. Let me know, guys, in the comments on my Facebook page, and guys, as always, if you could leave a like, that would be so much appreciated, and uh, hopefully we can come to a combined decision. Bye-bye.